Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Irons match preview with myself and Mike today. Pretty big game um, after that disappointing 5-1 defeat at Anfield in midweek in the Carabao Cup. A lot of a lot has been said, not just from fans, but also Moyes himself. We now go into this game slightly less confident after a, a quite a good string of results um, after the recent 5-0 uh, Fulham drubbing, but it kind of keeps swinging both ways. So it's hard to predict how this one against Man United is going to go because notoriously at the London Stadium, we've actually had some pretty good results against United and obviously they're struggling for form as well. They're only one point above us in the league, so we've got the incentive to leapfrog, leapfrog above them going into Christmas. So a lot to play for and, and a lot on the line in this one, Mike. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a weird old season, right? You know, we're, there's loads to talk about. Moyes out. The style of football isn't uh, sustainable. We've obviously said that ourselves quite a bit about the sustainability of the football. Um However, we win tomorrow, we could be up to fifth for a small, for a short period. Yeah, um, it is so weird because we are sitting here going, the football isn't widely that great, and we played in the last two games. Well, sorry, the two games prior to Liverpool, you start to think, oh, maybe we turn a corner. Maybe that five nil drumming um, by Fulham uh, has a uh, maybe knock some heads together and that's kind of seen a change in attitude. Then we see the Liverpool game and we just see, no, the attitude hasn't changed. It's just, we happen to come out against opponents who were off their game. You know, I wanted to kind of go with the idea that they weren't just off their game. It's because we forced those teams to have bad games. But then when you see how lacklustre we were against Liverpool uh, at times, you do then kind of go, and I know, I know that in defence people will go, it's highly rotated against Liverpool but there's still quite a significant number of first team players in there. And, you know, we went a whole half without even having registering a shot against Liverpool. That shows you the level of intent that we had. Yeah. I know we're playing Liverpool, but this was also a heavily rotated Liverpool team. And we did register a shot in the first half. The comments after it kind of irked <laughs> rightly a lot of people. Yeah. And as you say, you know, we're now going into this game. This game is now important. This game wouldn't have had a level of importance that arguably it has now because fans will, are going to expect a performance and expect not three points, but they're going to expect a team to go out with a bit of blood and thunder in play because of yeah the rotation and the suggestion. Well, that's what it is. Isn't it? He's, he's put himself now in a position where yeah. this game against Man United tomorrow is massive because... Yeah, like you say, we kind of threw that game uh, in a sense. The way he approached it with the lineup, the way he commented on the game after, kind of a defeated attitude saying, you know, Liverpool are just better than us when they're going to be in Europa League with us in March and potentially yeah. an opponent for us. You know, it's a team we want to try and be competing with. Again, not in the league, but, you know, we can be competitive. We've beat them yeah. in the past. You know, we beat them, what, two seasons ago? Yeah, so yeah. Over, over a two-leg game set sequence, you know, or one-off game, yeah, you know, form can go out of a window. Did they, yeah. The comments like, you know, well, they're, they're much faster than us and things like that. But the, you're in charge. You, you, Mr. Moyes, have put yourself at the centre of all of our recruitment. You've rejected players who are off pace. And <laughs> you're then moaning about the yeah. team not having pace. You are the main reason this squad is as it is. You are... You've built this squad over the last three. Well, that's that's why, yeah, that's why this is going to be really important on Saturday yeah. because you know the, the likes of Aguard were missing on on Wednesday. You mm. know, Emerson, Zuma at the back. You know, we did have a lot of players who didn't play. You know, Piquetta, um, again, War Prowse, like players that have been playing regularly. And then we kind of just chucked in Ogbonna, who's you know completely passed it. Ben Johnson, who hasn't yeah. touched a, a ball in a long time, even though he had a very good game. So we now go into this Man United game where we're going to be fresh, hopefully. That was the idea for Moyes, to be fresh for this game. And you know what? If we go fifth after beating Man United, I think most fans will quickly forget about the quarterfinal. Uh, that, that's my opinion. I, I don't think that, you know, a Carabao Cup quarterfinal is going to be, it's, you know, it's not going to hang around in my memory for that long because we just have so many other competitions that we're fighting for right now. I think if we finish in, say, fifth, sixth, around that, maybe even seventh at the end of the season, then I think you probably would go. I don't think people will. If we yeah. fall outside of any kind of European competition, then people are going to get hark back to that as to, look, that was an opportunity to put us one game away from Wembley. Um, you know, then you look at the the remainder of the teams in that tournament, if we would, you know, if you could have got past Fulham, it would have been a home game. So you would have probably expected us to have done that. We'd be in the final, which would again, again, given us the opportunity to do that 
and Moyes to argue leave with a middle finger up to the West Ham board saying that I've won you two trophies in the, you know, in the past two years and, and now you're, you're letting me go. And it, yeah, I just, it leaves, a, I just, I just have a real bitter taste about that game. And if we do win this one, great, it will put it to one side. However, I think come the end of the season, if we're not in a position to, you know, continue in Europe, I do think it's going to people are going to cog back to that as to that was a genuine opportunity wasted unless we go further, say in the FA Cup, where we get quite far in the league uh, in Europa uh, League. So yeah. it, it's think, a tricky yeah. one. I, it just, it just I, for me at the moment, I've got a very bitter taste about it. I think for me as well, I, I kind of I'm in both camps because you know playing someone like Ogbonna that should never really happen now. But when he's rotating in Ben Rama and Fornells and they're just not putting in the effort, they're just misplacing passes, they're not doing anything, the fundamentals right, they're not tracking back. That's that's more kind of it, it kind of shows how bad our squad depth actually is now, you know, in terms of quality coming in. And and I think Moyes is is, is he's kind of realized that now that we really only have that starting eleven, bar maybe one or two players coming in and out that he trusts. And that's why there's again, going to be a lack of rotation yeah. and these players that are coming in. Yes, they haven't had that many minutes, but they weren't doing the basics right at all on Wednesday night. You know, they weren't even trying. So, so I don't really have, I don't, I'm not going to really back them in that sense. No. I, and I think it, there's two schools of thought on it, isn't there at the moment? Cause, and you can kind of go, yeah, look, the players ain't up to, ain't up to snuff is one way to look at it and say these players, you know, aren't good enough. However, these players have been good enough for, for other years yeah. um, and the drop-off is quite significant. And But we also know that these players have also fallen out, fallen out of favour a bit with Moyes in terms of how much he plays them, how much he uses them. And, you know, it's, it is quite clear when you're not favoured by Moyes, yeah. you will be essentially ostracised and just chucked in and for five, ten minutes, you're not really given time. And you are, and, you know, if you go by what's said on, about the training ground, there are players that are a bit shunned and not really, uh, not really put, felt as part of the team yeah. necessarily under Moyes. If you're part of the main core, you are. And I feel that certain, some of these players are in that kind of camp where they're a bit out in the wilderness and, you know, again, fundamentally, that some of these players also need to step up. You know, I, everyone knows that I love Ben Ram, uh, I love Four Niles, who's ever following me. So they know that I absolutely adore him. But, you know, his drop off has been so significant. And yeah. he, at this point in time, he needs to go for, for himself, for his career. And two, he just needs to go because he's not up to a certain level, not playing to a level. Yeah. And I think that's the problem is when these players are just interjected or just kind of thrown into the team without any real kind of true minutes or maybe even confidence that the the manager values them because again when you think about what was said after that Liverpool game you're one of those players one you get two schools for one could be oh he's challenging them to do better and because of the way he's talking the other one is one of those players could be so he doesn't doesn't even give you don't care he doesn't trust us he's turning around saying we're not good enough we uh you know he never had any faith in us to even go out and win it's like if that's what he's saying in post match, what is he saying in the dressing room? Because you well, must yeah, be it's, 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 un it's unlikely they're going to be playing on Saturday, so let's shift the focus back to the Man United game. Well, because... he's gonna play, he's, he said they're basically going to play throughout January and February because of yeah. the, the African Cup of Nations. So, if that's how you're building these players up prior to that, and obviously, we've got a Man United game, one or two might have to play he as a sub, you know, not exactly giving them the G up to kind of. Go on, mate. Go, go. Come on the, uh, come on the pitch at half time or you know seventy or eight miles, miles, eighty ninth minute, and go and make a name for yourself for me in that eighty ninth minute. Yeah, it, it, it's just bad. Man. It just seems like bad team and squad management for me. Well, let's let's take a look at kind of the Manchester United situation as well because they're in. You know, they've had some similar issues this season, shall we say? Mm. With you know, they've had some injuries uh, throughout their squad as well, but they just don't seem to be clicking. You know, they've had some really poor defeats. Um, I think they're now three games without a goal scored. You know, they've got, you know, they have got some injuries at the back. You know, Maguire, um, you know, Martinez has been out. Um, uh, Sancho, obviously, uh, excluded from the squad. Dallo's now suspended from last week for this match. Casemiro, like, they do have a lot of players missing. Lindelof, another one. So they're going to be in a in a situation where defensively we can absolutely get at them. And I think if we if we take the game to Manchester in to Manchester United, we're much more likely to have success rather than sitting off and letting them play because we saw it. 
uh, against Newcastle. You know, Newcastle, you know, different type of opposition from West Ham, but they they completely controlled that match and they only won one nil. But you know, they won it through their intensity, and you know, United just couldn't lay a glove on them at all. Mm. Um, and that's kind of how it's been. And you know, you look at someone like Bournemouth as well, going to Old Trafford, winning three nil. You know, it's they've had some really poor results united and and defensively i think they're the fifth worst in the league uh, for expected goals conceded so there's definitely an issue there i think you can also look at it as teams playing the actual team not playing not playing against the badge yeah you know and i always i tend to have that fear sometimes that when with Moyes, he does tend to play the badge first and you know this isn't the united team of yesteryear they've been doing much like we have they've not necessarily played the most brilliant football that are their best football however they've been getting results and kind of grinding some out so it kind of masks over certain things obviously i know ten Hag has been talked about as potentially you know losing losing his job at some point but he did also win i think in that same period manager of the month as well as uh, harry Maguire winning player in a month yeah so it was kind of a, a weird simulation how weird, how weird things are at united um and it does mirror us in many ways. And obviously Moyes hasn't been up for managing up, but we were getting results whilst not necessarily playing very well. And in the two games that we have played well, there's still been some, you know, uh, recriminations because it's been, oh, well, why have we not played like that in other games? That's when we play better. So it's just, I think at the moment, no matter what seems to happen, everyone is at odds with Moyes, with the team. Yeah. And regardless of whether you support Moyes, then there are still then those ones who tend to support Moyes are then at odds with the team when they underperform. So it's just it's just really I think our, our fan base just it feels a bit odd at the moment because everyone seems to be at odds with something, and no one can really come to any kind of consensus or even agreement as to yeah. where fault lies. And it's just in it's terms a bit of the approach that. for this one, then Mike, what's the what's the kind of the key weaknesses in that Man, Man United team, and and also their strengths that we do need to be careful of because at the end of the day they do have some very talented players, and you know it's it's not going to be a walk in the park by any means. It's, right. it's going to be a very competitive game. I think even Ten Hag has said that they're now a counter attacking team. Yeah, um, they've been pretty good, uh, you know, defensively solid uh, in some in some respects. Um, obviously, I know, you know the stats doesn't necessarily say that, but they've been able to kind of have some shout outs and against the big teams they've kind of stepped up um and done quite well uh i think united will try and shut down the midfield because obviously they've got mctominay in there who'll look to try and shut it down as well obviously you've always got to be careful with uh fernandez and them on the counter attack i think sancho uh, sorry i think uh rashford is fit i know he's not had really good form but again it, it's pace and, and if not, it's going to show, you know, they've, they've got pace. Yeah, exactly. You know, pace is always a problem. Uh, I think if they play Anthony, then I'd just kind of some ways let him have the ball. because <laughs> he. I know what will happen if we do that. He'll end up scoring yeah. against us. Oh, yeah, I know. It would, it would be sod's law. But I think he's gone nearly 25 games with only one goal and what, um, yeah. zero assists or something. Or one, one assist and zero goals. It, it's incredible the amount of money they've spent on him when you look at like Kudus, for instance, uh, and you look yeah. at the, the difference in quality that you know both teams are getting out of them, which is again why I find it hilarious Moise's comments today talking about unless we're spending huge money, we can't compete. Man United spent 70 million pounds on a player, we spent half almost half that amount, and we've got a player that has arguably performing two times the standard of this 70 million pound player. So it's about buying smartly, it's not it, this is what I've is I think irking people now. It's these conversations that are essentially putting the players into a position where they're not good enough or they can't be as good as say these big teams. However, they can perform to that level if given, you know, the right recruitment, you get the right recruitment in, right today's and stuff. And I so think how, how, would you, how would you approach this game then, Mike, considering you know you said that Man United are probably more of a counter-attacking threat team and we might actually have more success by doing the opposite to them, letting them have some of the ball in that kind of middle area and then hitting them on the counter ourselves. Like, How would you balance that if you're David Moyes going into that game? I think you've got you've got to try and go for them. Um, I don't think there's any real point in trying to sit back. At the end of the day, um, I would rather see us lose and try and go for a game than sit, sit back and, you know, have a few attacks and then get hit on the counter and done. And, you know, that, that seems to be the story of our season. And that, to me, it just... What do you think is more likely to get a success in this game then? I think not showing Man United any respect at all. Yeah. I think they're a team at the moment that if you get at them, 
then they're a team that can struggle under the pressure. They they don't seem to be comfortable at the moment with with or really without the ball at times. Um, and I think that it, it, you have to kind of play a bit like we did against Brighton. So there's a level of disengagement. So you kind of let them have the ball because they're lacking creativity. So in some respects, you disengage and sit sit in a kind of tight shape and wait for them to you know maybe overplay or yeah. kind of their, their their pace to slow it in possession and then you pounce and that's kind of what we did against um brighton we we kind of really disengaged from them but when they they kind of slowed their pace right down is when we kind of actually then went for them and i think that's probably the tactic we need to play obviously we can't push too high because yeah. they do have pace now regardless of the form that those players are in pace is an incredible equalizer you know it, it you can have in the worst form ever, but if someone punts the ball over the top and you're just in a flat out race, yeah, form is irrelevant. That's all down just to athleticism. So I think we've got to be careful in that respect. We can't be too gung ho, but I think we have to be positive from from the mm. outset, and um, we, we have to kind of we have to go for United. I'm Absolutely, I think you you know looking at the especially you know the injuries that they've got, they're going to probably play a midfield of you know McTominay, Amrabat, uh, the youngster that's done well, Mayno or Fernandez yeah. in there. And then they've got, you know, they haven't got Casemiro. And at a centre-back, they're probably going to play Johnny Evans with Varane, um, with the injuries again to Lindelof, Maguire, Martinez. So there's definitely weaknesses there. Um, they also don't have Dallo, so they're going to bring in wan Bissaka, which I guess is, a, you know, a more defensively mm -hmm. astute player than Dallo. But, you know, offensively, is, is, they're going to lack on that right-hand side now. Um, and then Onana as well is he's someone that's been heavily, heavily oh, criticised and scrutinised this season. Players, if, if you've got a chance, shoot from range. Um, let's face I just it, think set know, pieces know. could be a huge one in this game. You know, if we're getting on Onana, it's similar to to what we've done in the past on goalkeepers. Like they're going to really struggle to deal with that. Yeah, I think that's. I think you're right. You 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 target the goalkeeper because you know of what he's done. So as you say, you you put and we've done it a lot this season. We try to put set pieces directly yeah. on the goalkeeper, which for me hasn't been that fruitful. It doesn't hasn't been really that good. It seems to be a lot of wasted opportunities. Um, I think recently yeah. we've been better from corners. But yeah, we've looked better, but we've not, we're still not scored. And we haven't been, you know, a team that we have been in previous seasons. Uh, sometimes it's just seems to be put on too close to keep. I know Bowen nearly scored. Um, I think it was against Wolves, wasn't it? With with his one by kind of that same tactic. But uh, if you're, if I'm Moyes, I'd be telling the, the lads when you're in and around the area, if you get a chance to have a shot, take it because the goalkeeper's fumbled on quite a few this season and he's looked a bit. A bit weak and it's just about if you're on the edge of the area take take a shot and if you are in a central position you know watching your teammate make yeah. that run into the box because he's got a habit of spilling so just gamble every single time we get the ball in and around the area make that gamble of getting into the area you know in advance of you know the player who's going to shoot for instance because if the goalkeeper spills it that defense at the moment i whilst united have been decent against some teams. They've also been quite static against others. You've got to kind of look to to do that. And with the three we have, that rotation between the three should help us out. But we're going to need Emerson to keep keep the width. Yeah. I think that's where. I think that double up could be huge. It, I think if Anthony plays on the right as well, that double up of Paqueta Emerson could mm -hmm. could be very very important for us, especially if they're going to have Wan Bissaka at right back because he's going to have a two on one a lot of the game, um, yeah. and then it just frees up space in the middle for someone like Kudus to drift in or Bowen, whoever's you know rotating in that space. No, I completely agree, and I think you know Wan Bissaka is obviously a far better defender uh, than he yeah. is an attacker. You know, we know Paqueta isn't going to be looking to kind of beat him down the line, etc. But if we can get Emerson into the game, then obviously that's going to really help us. Um, we need Sufal to be on his game as well, kind of going forward as well as being defensively. A, a week, what he did against Wolves, he can't do against United because I no. feel he will be punished because yeah. against United... Oh, Nacho will, will rinse him. Yeah, and I just don't think you can get away with those challenges that he made against no. Wolves, against Man United. I think you... You would get punished because again, it's it's the badge, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, we could. We, why couldn't we not beat Man United? We should we should have enough 
What's your prediction then, Mike? Because there's, there's, there's a lot going on. You know, such a big game to go fifth. We're, you know, I know we're, there's going to be other games played, but 30 points, fifth before Christmas, it would be a very good start to the season. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I just see United doing us on the counter-attack and it'd be like 1-0 and it'd be on a counter-attack. It'd probably be incredibly messy. Players will let all out of position. Probably a player scuffs it, falls into a Man United player and then just taps it away. I, I just, it just has that type of game written all over it for me, whereas we will have some really positive pieces, but we don't actually really create. Um, and we kind of sit off United a bit too much, allow them to get into the game. And then, you know, we'll, when we try and we start to look like we're getting on top, we'll give away something really scrappy and then we'll die a death because we won't then create. I, I hope that's not true, but it's just a gut feeling I have. And I think it's probably because of, what Moises said over the last few days, it just just sapped any enthusiasm that I have that this team is being pushed to to perform well. And if you're in that eleven, I think you're pretty much you pretty much know you ain't going anywhere. You're in that eleven, so in some ways you can play. You can have a bad game, and you're going to be playing for the next three or four weeks before you're even going to be pulled up and said as you know even questioned as to the validity for you being in that team. So mm. I don't know. I just I just don't feel confident at the moment or have much of a buzz about watching or or just West Ham in general. I just I'm really lacking for any kind of buzz and at the moment I think the last couple of games comments or the sorry this last week's comments have really just sucked any that 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 positivity that we had from the last two and you know and against the wolves game I, in, in our whatsapp group i was incredibly positive about that performance and praise moyes etc about how we set up and how we played um but yeah th this week has just completely done the reverse and just pulled any air out of the sails for me yeah no i think that's completely valid considering what happened on wednesday and what moyes has said since but I think for me, I'm, I'm hoping it's, you know, for right or wrong, the psychology uh, in that squad now is the focus was always going to be this Man United game. Mm -hmm. And I think Moyes probably told us that with his lineup. Um, and I'm just hoping now that that energy and that focus is going to go into this match. And, you know, we've been pretty good at home, you know, by and large throughout, you know, the past few years, we've actually had a very good home record and made it very difficult for teams to come here and, you know, find that win, um, whether it's a, a scrappy goal or a counter attack or whatever it be we haven't really been dominated at home unless it's you know someone like city who who would come here and do that um i think with united i just think defensively we, there's so many gaps and so many ways we can exploit them that if we're on it and we're pressing high from the start and you know we're not showing them that respect to, to gradually get into the game um slowly and you know keep it at that tempo I don't see why we shouldn't score at least two or three goals against them. Um, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet just because of the pace they have. And, you know, they do have some very good attacking options, um, regardless of the statistics. I think it will be a free one to us. Um, again, that's a very positive way to look at it. But I just, I just, I'm just hoping that, that that energy and focus is on this game. And then, you, you know, what happened in midweek was to focus on this, um, whether you think rightly or wrongly so. I just I mean, think that it's going to be in this game. So one thing's for sure: if there is a slight, the slightest hint of lacking urgency, I don't think the crowd are going to no. be quiet about it. Oh, it has to be. It has to be on it from the start. And it's, if they're not on it, then I think that's the problem. They've been they've set up now as to if there is not the level of intent people want or expect. Hot coals is an understatement. I think it could it could yeah. really get a bit nasty in the crowd because it's you let us down in the last game and you were arrested for this and this is what you're putting up. Then I think that will certainly they will turn into a Twitter storm. Let's face it. Let's be honest. That yeah. is that will happen. But I think in the stands, you know what? Even in the stands, actually, it might it might not even anything happen in the stands. I think there's just a level of apathy at the minute watching West Ham when I seem to go there from, from the crowd. It seems so quiet, even if we do play terribly um, and there's a lack of urgency. I, I I genuinely don't think there's necessarily anything in the crowd at the minute to get up and to actually have a moan. There might be a boo at half time, but collectively as a, as a roar to kind of get things going, just things seem feel really just something feels lacking at the minute for me. 
Especially well, let's hope that let's hope the energy does go into tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a massive game against a massive team, so it's going to be important that we give it everything and hopefully get the three points and go up, you know, above them into fifth on thirty points. And you know, we'd have a much more enjoyable Christmas uh, than yeah. than what could potentially happen if we if we don't win tomorrow or don't show that energy, like you mentioned, that Moyes was alluding to missing on Wednesday. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If we go for it, mate, we're all going to be happy. We're going to go into Christmas <laughs> with a smile on our face, with a slight annoyance at the week, but we will yeah. go in happy. But yeah, we. I, I just want to see a performance. I want to see some urgency and I want to see a performance because, like I say, the wind has been massively taken out of my sails this week after the performance on Wednesday and, and some of the comments that have come out since then just kind of just it kills any enthusiasm. Well, we shall see in a very short amount of time. Early kickoff on Saturday um, and we'll be back for the review of it at the weekend. Uh, make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as always and leave a comment down below of your score prediction for the game and how you're feeling towards the whole situation right now at West Ham. And yeah, Mike, until next time. Come on, come you on.